Uh, let's start there, Chris, because that, that, that was a new stat to me that you were the only guy in the country who was kicking and punting at the same time. Did you n know that or uh, is that news to you too? I found that out literally like five minutes ago too. <laughs> I did not know that. Uh, I never really thought about it, but yeah, kind of cool, kind of a cool stat, I guess. Yeah, well, exactly. How, how did you feel about that, I guess? At the time, you weren't aware of it, but I mean, is that something that you can now take with you forevermore? I was the only guy doing punt uh, returns and punts. Yeah, I guess so. I did that in high school too. I did punting and punt returns and all that stuff, so I was pretty used to it. So I didn't really... I just hadn't done it in a while. I never really thought that I was doing both just because I did it in high school too. But looking back, it'll be kind of cool, I guess, to realize I was one of the few people who does that in college football, I guess. Uh -huh. Well, what was your attitude when you started punting? Because Stephen Pyle went out and then you came in punting. Was it something that you were craving and wanting to do or just something you could do that, to help uh, the team? It was just something that the Coach Walsh and them have had me practice a little bit every camp since I've been here because they know I punt in high school. And uh, when Stephen went down, he just asked me if I could punt. I said for sure, let's do it, and just any way I could help the team, I'm always I'm always game for it. So that was pretty much it. Yeah, um, shifting gears to Weber State, um, they're 0 and f 5 I think this year, and they've been towards the bottom of the conference the past few years. How do you guys approach? You know, this is going to be your fourth matchup against them, and fifth so you were redshirt, right? Yeah. So you've seen them for five years. I mean, how do you guys approach this game? Um, we approach every game the same. You know, we have to take care of ourselves first, and you know, we're not a perfect team either. We've had some close games, and but I feel like, you know, every week if we go in and we play the game we're supposed to play that we can, you know, do very well. And I think if we continue to do what we've done the past two games on offense and on defense that we could, we should be able to get a win over in Weber. Yeah, what kind of uh, development have you seen Weber State make over the course of your career? Um, well, my first two years, uh, we weren't in the big sky yet. That's true. So, um, That's right. You did I play them non-conference, though, right? At we, their house? I didn't play them my first two years here, and we played them once when I was a sophomore and then once last year. And um, they're always a team that seems like they always have uh, good athletes. They always fly around and play with energy. They just come up short a couple of times. And um, I, Coach Walsh told us they have a new head coach, kind of a new attitude. So um, we're going to watch more film on them this week. Um, from what I've seen, though, they, they run around the ball. They play with a lot of passion, and you know they play fast. So, um, you know, it seems like they've got a little more pep in their step. I guess a little more energy as a team. So, you know, they've got that going for them. And you know, they're a good team. Everyone's good in the Big Sky. So, you can't you know take any team for granted. We got to show up and you know just face every team the same. Yeah, you've you've played with Nick DeZubnar your uh, whole career. He's leading yeah. the country right now in tackles. What kind of respect do you have for him and and uh, you know, what makes him so good as a, a linebacker? Um, just, he's very instinctive. He's, the stuff he does when I watch him, it seems like you can't really explain technically why he does it, but he just always is around the ball. And he's really, really good. He's one of the best defensive players I've ever played against or seen who has great, like, lateral speed. And he's got a motor that just never quits. And he's, yeah, I'd say he he just runs down the ball laterally as good as any linebacker that I've ever played against or with, and he just he's just got a hell of a motor. Yeah, what's his role vocally on the team right now? Um, you know, Nick's a vocal guy. He's not always constantly talking any every chance he gets because he's the captain. But when Nick needs to speak, he will. Um, he speaks with purpose, and all the guys definitely listen. He's been. For sure, a three-year starter, and he contributed a bunch his redshirt freshman year on special teams and coming in for certain packages at linebacker. So he's a guy that all the guys on the team and the younger guys definitely respect. He comes in the weight room, works hard. Everything he does, he does with a purpose. Uh, he's a great leader on the team for sure. Chris, you guys are 2-0 and at home. You're 0-3 on the road. Is there anything to those numbers in your mind in terms of road preparation or things like that? Um, no, we just got to learn to finish a little bit on the road. We've had some close games on the road. I don't know if we're finishing better because we're at home or just because we're playing better as a team that day. But I, I, I personally don't feel like there's been a change in the way we've approached the game, whether we've been on the road or whether we've been home. But uh, we do need to get a road win, though, especially in this league. I feel like you guys have had as much success in obvious passing downs uh, the last couple of weeks mm -hmm. th th that I've seen in a long time. Do you, what do you attribute that to? Um, we're definitely paying a little more attention to detail during practice with our passing stuff. And I feel like this year we've pinpointed 
we've taken out a lot of – we used to have a great volume of passing plays, I feel like, and this year we've kind of shortened that down the list a little bit and kind of worked on quality more than quantity with some of the pass concepts we have. And I feel like that's been helping. And the coaches have also been doing a good job of making sure that the passing you know, routes or concepts we do use during practice are the only ones we're going to like show in the game. So we've been, uh, in my opinion, kind of a quality over quantity thing, at least for the, like a practice standpoint, that carries over well to the game. How have you seen Chris Brown mature as an overall quarterback over his two years, years, the quarterback? Uh, I've seen him mature a lot just with the passion he plays with to you know, he's a, he's a quiet guy, um, but he's definitely become more vocal this year, um, especially with the, we have a lot of young guys on offense too, especially with our QB being an underclassman like he is. Um, I'd say he's improved as a leader and just his poise. You know, um, I think that's just having the, all those games last year under his belt with his experience that's helped him kind of shake off some things that don't go his way. And I think as an offense, we've done that a lot better job since game one of not getting rattled if we get a a three and out. It's no big deal. We just come back and use it as fire to just, you know, make a big player, have a big drive next time. So he's definitely, you know, matured a lot. And just the past year and a half that I've played with him is one of my starting QBs. Anything else?